Even as NASA and the rest of the world await this week's launch of two astronauts to the International Space Station aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, the space agency itself has its eyes trained deeper into space, much deeper. The entire purpose of the Commercial Crew program was not just to open up space travel to the private sector, it was also to allow the agency to devote its human exploration energy to returning astronauts to the surface of the moon and later to Mars. We're going to Mars, and in order to go to Mars, we have to use the moon as a proving ground. We need to get to Mars. That's our, our, our driving ambition as an agency and as humanity. Uh, as far as exploration, this has been on the minds of many people for generations and generations. The new lunar program, named Artemis, after the sister of Apollo, aims to have the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon no later than 2024. The plan is an ambitious one, but with a lot of work and a few breaks, the goal can be met. Long in development and now nearing completion is the rocket that will be used for the missions. NASA's prosaically named Space Launch System, or SLS, the 21st century's answer to the 20th century's Saturn V. Initial versions of the SLS will stand taller than a 32-story building. Later iterations will top out at 38 stories. Either one will be more than capable of setting crews off on a deep space journey. The SLS rocket, the biggest rocket that's ever been built in history, taller than the Statue of Liberty. Um, it's on the five yard line and we're gonna punch it into the end zone. If we're gonna land in 2024, which we're gonna do, the key is gonna be SLS. Also nearly ready for flight is the Orion crew vehicle, an exceedingly souped up version of the old Apollo spacecraft, able to carry as many as six crew members compared to Apollo's three. The first flight could take place as soon as 2021. Welcome inside the Orion Trainer. Right now, I'd say crew members are over here two or three days out of the week uh, doing different tests. One of the neatest things about the Orion spacecraft in general is that this is designed to take us to Mars. And so this spacecraft is designed to be operated autonomously by the crew. So when we are on our way out to Mars, there's gonna be minutes of calm delay back to Houston and we have to make all the decisions in here. It's really amazing, it's, it's an impressive vehicle. In order to land on the moon, NASA needs a new lunar lander, and on April 30th, the space agency selected three companies, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Dynetics, to begin the work of developing one. The early blueprints from all of the companies are promising, and the competition will be bracing, with only one company emerging as the final builder. NASA's goal for this generation of lunar landings is not to repeat the short visits of the Apollo missions, the so-called flags and footprints model, but rather to go to the moon to stay. Now, I don't want to give any specific dates, I don't want to make any announcements, but uh, if we're going to land in 2024, we've got to select quickly. The goal is to lead a coalition of nations to have a sustainable presence at the moon with more access to more parts of the moon than ever before. We learned that there's hundreds of millions of tons of water ice at the South Pole of the Moon. What does that mean? Water ice represents air to breathe, it represents water to drink, it represents rocket fuel. We are going to Mars. The Moon is a waypoint. It's the place where we learn how to live and work. We learn how to make it sustainable. Only by learning how to live off the land in a long-term encampment just a three-day flight from home can America be sure it's ready to take the next great step to send astronauts to Mars? After half a century of staying close to home in low Earth orbit, human beings will once again look deeper into space and will follow to the places that cosmic gaze leads them.